Kelcliff Energy Drink Ignite. I'm drinking right now. It's awesome. Thank you for sending me these. They keep me awake when I don't want to make coffee in the morning. I just wait it out a little bit, and then I just pound an energy drink. It's great. Mm. And also, Liquid Death sent me a bunch of water. So now I ex exclusively get all of my water from Liquid Death. I even shower with it. So uh, We love those. My boyfriend, he, he's the one who showed me those. I thought he was drinking a beer like early in the morning, and he's like, try it. It, it actually tastes really good, too. Yeah, it's nice and refreshing. It's and uh, I like the sparkling water one because I'm mixing it with booze. I'm an alcoholic. So uh, I just make, mix it with tequila and a little lemon and I'm great. It's 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 awesome, but anyway, uh yeah, I feel it's funny like my whole all of my liquid intake now comes from uh some friends. It's either <laughs> liquid death or my energy from Killcliff and then I get friends sending me beer, so that's nice too, but how are you jet ski? Johnson, Jesse Johnson. I'm good. I've been drinking uh, yerba mate. Ooh, I like that mug. Did you make that mug? No, no. I wish. Okay. This is a gift from my dad and my stepmom years That's ago. Awesome. It's big. That's why I like it. It looks handmade. That's why I think it looks nice and sturdy. And uh... somebody made it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so how's it been? I know that uh, right now Kill Tony is kind of on a little bit of a break, but. You know, that's where I met you. I met you at the Kill Tony show, and uh, you're hilarious. I mean, you're usually like a shining bright star in the middle of this chaos in there. Well, thank you. Uh, it's been it, it's been good. Like, uh, I don't know. We worked every week of the quarantine, so mm -hmm. I'm really thankful for that. Like, having some form of consistency during this huge shakeup of everyone's reality, uh, yeah. it was nice to have even though the shows were really different, like from Better Box to even the new comedy store ones, it was, mm -hmm. I'm really thankful that we had that consistency, at least in my, I don't know. Yeah. Now I've kind of just adjusted to this reality. Like people keep asking me about the lockdown here from other states. They see like these headlines. Oh, you can't even go on walks now in California. I'm like, it's not that bad. It's yeah, guys. Settle down. <laughs> but, but then I remember like how how used to the lockdown I've become where I'm like, we can still do everything we've been doing, except go basically all we can do is support big business. <laughs> so right. It's like, right, yeah. And I've and just or, kind of become used to it. Yeah, it's weird. I mean, you have to. I mean, what else are we going to do? I mean, move. Some people can't afford to move. You have lives here. You know, you have family members established. Uh, you know, work connections or anything that you got, like some, you know, some people are lucky that they can up and go like, like Tony and them and then, and, and Joe and, and pretty much everyone is, seems to be moving to Austin right now. But uh, I, I don't know. I, I think that it leaves opportunity here for people, like the people that are here to, to, uh, you know, work like yeah. you guys, you guys are going to get opportunities now because you're taking over a void that's being left behind. It's kind saying. of win-win for everyone when you look at it that way, because even the people moving that are more established comedians, there's opportunity for them as well to perform. Mm -hmm. So it, I'm with you on that. Like, I can't I can't move right now. I definitely want to visit Austin for sure, but I've never even been to Texas. Have you been? I have. I have. I've been thankful or thankful, blessed. <laughs> uh, I'm thankful that I was able to take these trips, though. Uh, with a band, you know, just touring the U.S., we we spent like four days in Texas because it's such a big state. So yeah, you gotta, and you got to hit like pretty much all the four corners if you want to, you know, if you're if you're in a band that's touring, you want to do as many shows as you can. But uh, yeah, it's a it's a big state. I like it. It's you know, it's true what they say that everything's bigger in Texas too. Like, I don't like know, literally. Like, yeah, literally. Every like the beers are huge over there. Like I, in the gas station, you get these. 32 ounces that are like these barrels I'm like we, this was before it became common to see like you know 40s and shit everywhere else but tony's uh, gonna look like a little elf out there it's uh yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's cool i mean i think he'll stick out obviously he'll stick oh, out yeah. from the from the bunch I, th I think he's really happy there i think everyone i i, I hear some comics like you know i'm i'm like in the I don't even know if I'm in the in-between. I'm still kind of working around. So I, I hear a lot of, like, 
whispers about the people moving and just like why are they moving and and I kind of I kind of get it. It yeah. makes sense to me if you want if that's all you do is perform like you go crazy out here. So mm -hmm. why not move to a place that opens more doors for you? Sure. Yeah. I mean, I know that definitely they're doing shows out there with with a live audience and that's cool. But I mean, I'm still not comfortable with that idea. Like, I, yeah, I definitely want live shows back. I miss it. Obviously. I mean, who doesn't? That's yeah. Uh, but at the same time, like, I'm not comfortable with that until the, there's a good vaccine out. Like everybody's taking their shots like we do with the flu every year and, and we're kind of have a grasp on the situation. Then sure. I'm, I'm down for I'm down to be in a crowd, too. But even if I moved to Austin right now, I wouldn't be going to these shows. That's what I'm trying to say. I would be waiting for yeah. a vaccine. Weird. Yeah. Well, I heard there's one out. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, so I, was it today? They said that they, somebody got approved. Pfizer or. Yeah. One of those big company vaccines is now available. So there is a light at the end of the tunnel. And like I said, I, I'm I've been talking I've been talking to Joel, uh, your bandmates, you know, Chris mm -hmm. and, and Jeremiah, and I I've just kinda like I think this is your time now. This is this is the time for the younger talent that's been, you know, putting in their dues like you guys. I mean, you're doing it every Monday and you're doing new characters and you're doing on the spot kind of improv you guys have you're, you're like masters at it you think i've definitely felt like i've been in sketch comedy for years well before joining kill tony i don't know if a lot of people know that like if they think i just joined magically and fit in like i <laughs> i but i will say since joining i i know i've gotten so much better even at trumpet alone because just playing in an ensemble every week as to before years had gone by before i played with a group you just learn, you build different muscles that sure, you can't sure. learn, like, just practicing by yourself. So, yeah, that, like, to what you're saying, like, we've, we've all, like, together just grown comedically. And now I have, like, a whole wardrobe of costumes. <laughs> so <laughs> I got to do something with that. Yeah. Cause yeah, we, I mean. Yeah, we keep all that shit. Like, that's all we personally go get our own costumes. But now we just have like sky's the limit for sketches or you know yeah yeah, yeah i mean so, I mean, so you got the yeah. show hit send right that you're starting with uh mitch burrow right yes you're not gonna be wearing like you're not gonna be in characters no that. we do a segment called the fatherly advice so the show is kind of set up in segments i'll start there and then uh, we do um a lot of interaction with a, a live stream comment thread and that's the basic structure of the show. And one of the segments is called Fatherly Advice. And so Mitch is about to have a baby, and mm. for real. And this this segment, I play his daughter, his future daughter, <laughs> at any span of childhood and present a problem. Like uh, last week, I told him how there's a really cool party I want to go to. And there's lots of beer and boys. And he had to give me fatherly advice. So we're trying to train Mitch up. So I'm not getting into costume, but I'm still doing that um, improv. That's awesome. Okay. Yeah. I like that. I like that. I mean, I know you, you guys are doing it from the comedy store. So uh, I know the comedy store is trying to figure out ways. I give them so much credit for that. They're trying to come up with ways to stay afloat during these crazy times. So they're doing a lot more shows like that. And podcasts. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, th I appreciate that they're doing that. And it, I mean, it opens up. A lot more opportunity for you just being there, you know, coming from there. It carries that weight of the name of the store you know, with it. Yeah, I mean, it feels good to record there. Like, I I like the value of starting a podcast from the ground and getting people in that way. And I've done that before with other stuff. But it, it does feel really good to have them backing us. Just yeah. having that. You go to their page to see us. Um, and it's because people are leaving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're leaving the void. It's fine. That's, I mean, again, do what you got to do for you. Uh, but, I, I, you know, a lot of people see it negatively. Like you were saying, you know, I get messages from friends from other states that are like, I hear it's Mad Max out there. How are you holding up? I'm like, yeah. I don't know. I had a, a fancy cookie the other day. I bought at a cookie shop across the street. Like, it's fine. I'm fine. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, 
my life has been I'm again it's been good I've adjusted I don't even think I realize how much I've adjusted to this new reality I've just I've always been someone who makes the best of a situation Mm -hmm. uh but I've got a dog and I live with my boyfriend now and we have really good days we walk the dog we take her on hikes which are still open yeah yeah somebody my mom said I heard you can't go on walks I said, who's I writing these articles? I don't know about all that. I don't know. About that. We're fine. Yeah. I mean, you, you go on a Saturday, you go to the farmer's market. There's plenty of people all out right now walking around. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. I guess I just have, it almost feels like settling down because I've just live a very simple life now, but I do get, I still get to do like podcasts like this. And I've, I did a really cool um, show for a college and it was like this over Zoom or yeah, Twitch yeah. or something. And Mitch and I are able to collaborate. So when I feel like I'm not doing anything, I have to remember, like, no, you're still doing a lot, which has been a pattern my whole life. Yeah. And that's, I-, I mean, I think that's the biggest, like, the brightest stars come from. Like, I think hard work pays off for sure, 100%. And if you've done it for so long, you've been adjusting, like, you get, you, you've lived your whole life, like you said, adjusting to the whatever comes. You end up, you have that hustle mentality that not a lot of people yeah. have. And if you have that hustle mentality now with all this stuff that we have, like you said, all this technology, you can make yourself, you know, you don't need investors and stuff. You know, those will come later. You can yeah. build something on your own and then somebody will buy you out like they did with Rogan. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's yeah. what I'm looking for, that hundred million. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're looking for that Spotify money. Somebody told me that. I, I or, or I read about it and I said, can you believe Rogan made a million dollars? And they were like, no, he made a hundred million. <laughs> and I was like, what? Yeah. I've never, I can't even think about that much money. Like, yeah, I don't it, know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I would do. I guess, uh, I guess that's what, that comes with, you know, humble beginnings. But cause I, I've never had that, like, oh, I want this fancy car. Like, I, I don't, I don't ever, I never think about that because it's like, it's never, you know. Like, it's so far in the future. I'm like, I need to work there to get there. I don't know. No, I'm with you. I've never... There's, like, a few things. Like, I got the new iPhone. Nice. Which, which I really like. I'm, and But before that, I had the 6. So, I, re- I really wear things out. Like, my shoes are a good metaphor for most things I have. Like, I wear them until they're falling off my feet. And it's yeah. same with my phone was like it was out and i was like all right well i'm gonna get the new best one because i'll probably have it for 10 years <laughs> <laughs> yeah well so, you hear you yeah. hear stories of, of people like su- successful people like look at tony for example you hear him talk about how he started off poor yeah and you don't you you see him now and you can't even imagine that because he's like driving yeah, I around never met him like that poor vet you know what i mean <laughs> yeah <laughs> so it's like yeah I don't, I don't know a poor tony you know <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it's, I never met him like, like that, but it, it makes sense just the way he, like, wants to lift people up. And I know with me, he's, like, really, really sees something in me, and I think he wants to be a part of it um, because other people did that for him. And I think he likes to cultivate talent, obviously, not just with me, like, his whole show's about that. So yeah. it's a, it makes sense, even though it's hard to see now. <laughs> <laughs> it makes sense that is where he came from. Yeah, yeah, and not only that, but you know, pe- some people get upset at him because you know, like for example, now like with him moving to Texas, people get upset at that, and people are upset at Rogan for moving to Texas, and like it, 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 you, they start seeing that there is you know something there. Like they they start forgetting, I think, all the work he's done, like to to, to help people. You know what I mean? And oh, obviously, yeah. if he hears this, is you know he's. His his heel character will be like, of course, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> yeah, that's what I do. But yeah, like he's he does a lot of work for young talent, which I appreciate, and not just talent, but just even like backstage. You you know, I've I've had the the honor of being in the area, just hanging out with him and and and, and Rogan, and you it just be you become part of that vibe, and everybody kind of introduces each other, and it's just like yeah. a, you know, there's there's a lot of camaraderie, which is important because it's just that's how we build stuff up as a community. You know what I mean? It's nice to go solo, but I, n- I always felt more comfortable in a band, for example, like with music, like I, a solo project, I get lost in it. I'll never finish it. <laughs> well, you know, it's weird. I, I relate to that a lot. And I, I, so when I 
was in Arizona, where I'm from. I was watching Kill Tony from my room, and I would work on jokes. And I never, I'd never even been to Los Angeles. And I thought, what would I do if I did a minute? And then I made it out there, and I got up first. First time I was in LA, first time at the comedy store. Signed up for Kill Tony, got up first, and had a great set, and then went back home. And I started thinking, oh, what if I could be the regular? Which I think a lot of comics who watch the show do. Yeah. And I signed. I moved to L.A. I signed up for the show again. I was doing really well on the show. It, Red Band was literally telling me in the hallway of the store, like, keep signing up. Like, you, we really like you. We're, we're looking for a new regular. Like, almost like you're going to get it. Mm-hmm. And then I just didn't get pulled for a long time. And every once in a while I'd show up and I'd I'd get on and I'd do well. But it just like, I kind of just stopped going after a while because I thought I really want to be a comic. I can't waste three hours of my night hoping to do a minute of comedy. Right, 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 right. So I, I didn't have a bitterness towards the show, but I felt like. I have to go somewhere else so I was really working doing mics every night and then one day I got a text from Joel this is like months later and he's like hey Jeremiah can't be there tonight can you be in the band and I thought holy shit I never even thought of this as a possibility and for me I think to go back to your original point it was so better suited for me I always saw a future I always saw myself in that show but I never thought of the band, and for me, that was, like, the perfect place for me to be, then alone as a regular. Well, it all sounds to me like it happened for a reason. Like, it all sounds... It really feels like it. Destiny-ish, you know? <laughs> it like really it, it, feels like it. Yeah, fit, perfect fit, you know. Um, so, when you, so, you would say that your music talent, like, you started playing uh, trumpet how, how, how young ago? Like how long? Uh, when I was ten, so like twenty years ago, Shit. which is crazy because I'm not as good as someone who's played for ten years. <laughs> but but I, I took a lot of turns. If that I think you're more talented on, on the trumpet than you think than you give yourself credit for. Uh, Definitely. I mean, I mean, I saw so, I saw what you did. I mean, I saw what you did at Kill Tony every Monday. That was great. But also when we got the chance to hang out with DJ Lethal, like uh, just God, jamming. That was so cool. Just jamming out. It was so fun. And, and you know, I, I love seeing, like, the, I love seeing creation happen with music. It's been my passion since I was, like, when I, I was 13, I guess. That's when I started with the bands and shit. And yeah. just being a part of that, there's no uh, explanation. I don't know how to explain it in words, the feeling of seeing a band jam. Or being in a band jamming, like you guys were doing. Uh, and, and it's something that I think is universal that connects with everyone like yeah music connects with everyone I, I i really rarely meet someone that's like yeah i don't like music and, I, and those I people I, I just don't talk to those people that like how do you not listen to music at all any genre like, come on you got no, it they just want attention yeah right, right. yeah sorry <laughs> i can't that's i'm I'm, always, I'm reading too many books well comedy kind of translates to that to me like using Kill Tony as an example, we are the band, but I feel like the whole ensemble is a band in itself because there's moments where, like, I'll have a joke in my head and I know it's going to hit, but there's, you know, seven other people talking on stage, right? So you can't just, like, say it. And there's, like, plenty of moments where Tony will see me and he'll know I've got something and he'll kind of, like, give the floor to me. Mm-hmm. And it, it's almost like jamming in a band where you're like, you know, where you're, you know, somebody wants to do a solo or they want to lay something down and everybody kind of communicates telepathically in a way where they're like, okay, you go. And there's plenty of moments like that where, I don't know, there's this like unspoken um, communicating going on. You know, you, you just made me think of something. Uh, most musicians that I know are nerdy. I'm nerdy. A lot of my friends are nerdy They because we study it. You know, it becomes like yeah. a nerdy thing. You study the music and you study musicians and you study styles. And, you know, I took jazz history, you know, classes in high in college and stuff. You know, you, you get you start diving in and uh, it, it's it's a, like you just said, telepathy. Right. So yeah. there is there is something there that, that we communicate telepathically during using music. So 
why aren't there more people studying that? Like you, you talk to people about telepathy and they're like, that's science fiction. That's the X-Men. Like, yeah. But, but we're doing it. <laughs> we're doing it in a band. Like there's something there. I think people should really figure that out. No, no, it's real. I mean, have you ever spent time with someone so, so long that you just, you, you it's like that whole, you finish each other's sentences kind of thing. Right. Yeah. Like, it's true. It's a real thing. I think people all accept that. But then when you call it telepathy, they were like, they think of mind readers and get freaked out. <laughs> it's all, it's all about word association. I was talking to a buddy of mine about this, how with, it all depends on how things are presented to you. It's, yeah. it's how somebody says it to you, what time of the day they say it, how they say it, like with the tone of voice. Um, who's around, who's around. Like you yeah. think about cell phones, like, I, I know that there's a technological explanation why I can access everything in the universe with this thing in my hand. Um, but I don't know what the technological explanation is. So in my head, it was just kind of, I accepted that this does that, you know, I'm just like, okay, that's what that does. And that's well, you it. know, what's crazy is how, if you Google search something like I Google searched, uh, like, uh, dog harnesses for my dog and then all my ads changed to different dog harnesses oh yeah that's the other everybody, <laughs> everybody knows that but to what we're talking about there will get to a point where i just think about dog harnesses and my phone will know me so that it will finish my and start mm. showing me results before i even type it in yeah yeah no that 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 connection is there and i think yes in part there is an algorithm but in another part it's us reaching out to telepathically or whatever we just got to find another word for it so that people can accept it like i said like me accepting that this works we need to figure out a way for people to accept that we can use telepathy somehow well musicians know. do yeah. yeah yeah and i think comedians do too when they're in a group setting um it, when you're doing stand-up alone there's like if you're doing crowd work there's a little bit of that it, I don't know if it's so much telepathy or just routine where you, you see a person in the crowd. Like, Jeremiah is so good at it. I don't even know how he does it. But he can do crowd work so well. Where And Tony as well. Like, they just they see so many people on the road that they know if they're going to talk to someone where it's probably going to lead. Right. Like, they know probably what job they do. They know probably what kind of relationship they're in. Like... So th I guess there's a little bit of that as well, of just knowing people and how they operate. Yeah, you get a good read. You, the more people you meet, and the, uh, like that happens a lot with musicians too, like they, you know, touring and everything, and the meet and greets and all that. Yeah. The more people you meet, the better of a read you get off of other, like when you see them. And it's not just physical, because yeah, you judge a book by its cover and whatever. Sure. But, but there's also the vibe, the feeling you get when you meet them, right? Yeah, yeah. Because I'll meet somebody and, and I'll right away, I'll know, like, I can't, I'm, nope, that person <laughs> stays over there. Yeah. Um, we are not friends. Uh, but there's other people that, you know, you, you guess you have to warm up to them, too. You have to put a little bit of work if you see that the work is in, like, you know, Jeremiah and I talked about that. How he and I kind of didn't really talk at first because he thought I was just a beer guy. Yeah. I'm like, no, there's more to it. There, you know, there's a little more. Let me just, let me just you know, hang out. <laughs> so what are, what are your plans now that, you know, Kill Tony's on hiatus? I mean, I'm assuming it's going to continue in, in Austin. Uh, there are, I guess, no details. I, I don't really know much. I haven't really talked to Tony about it. I, I just check on him. Like, you, you all right? He's like, yep. Like, Great. And honestly, I don't think anybody knows. I think everyone's just trying to do their best and figure it out. But for me, I starting the podcast with Mitch, that's going to be like my new weekly thing. Um, the first few weeks might be a little like uh, one week on, one week off as we get the ball rolling. Um, but then we're going to dive into it. And other than that, I want to do a lot more sketches. And Joel and Jeremiah and I have talked about it. I've got other comic friends I've talked about doing sketches with. And so that's kind of, I want to do more content on like that like I used to do. I would say, honestly, and maybe this is me overstepping my boundary, but uh, the chemistry you, you the band has away from Tony and, and Red Band, just the band, um, is something that I don't think should be lost. And like, 
if there could be some kind of spin-off situation where you guys now have your own show where you're doing skits and stuff like that i mean i think that's a good move too because you know you get you can also maintain some of the momentum and connectivity of the you know what got you to to that point now where we kill tony so maybe it's part of that umbrella the death squad or or something like that you know what i mean uh, yeah, I know what you mean, and it, we'll always work together. Like, we talked about it a lot, um, just how we, when we're, so when we're backstage, we're learning all the songs, like, an hour before the show, we, like, <laughs> we really rush it, and we um, get into character and stuff, and then after, we kind of talk about the show, and through both of those times that we're together, we're always, like, either bringing ideas to the table that we had outside of rehearsal or during rehearsal as we're all talking something is like oh my god we should do that or so we have like all these ideas and we've talked many times about like yeah no matter what we're gonna keep working together like so i don't know as far as a spin-off show i don't think we're gonna go that route but um we're definitely gonna be putting content out as a group and we have some roadcasts that i don't mm. think have come out yet that I, I thought were really, really fun that Jeremiah and Joel and I did. Chris wasn't there, but uh, he was... It, so it was Jeremiah was headlining Tempe Improv, and Joel okay. and I went with him. So that's why Chris wasn't there. But the roadcasts were really fun, and yeah. Nice. Hopefully those will be out soon. Uh, for music, is is there any interest in you doing a like a, like a like serious just music album? Like not non-comedy? At That's something this you would point, ever thought of? Yeah, like, um, I have, like, before I started stand-up, I was doing sketch comedy. So I was, I've been involved with comedy since I was 15. But um, there was this period of time, like, out of high school and into college that I was writing all this serious music. And I think I just got to a point where I became a joke so much to myself <laughs> that I just started comedy because I couldn't. I was taking myself too seriously and I don't know I don't I enjoy listening to serious music like I see value in it but I don't know if I personally can get to that point um maybe uh <laughs> but I definitely want to keep making comedic music um and I I really wanted to like so we have a segment on the Hits End podcast where it's called freestyling and then Mitch calls it cultural appropriation <laughs> but then <laughs> And we go back and forth, but I really wanted to start rapping because it's a way of spoken word art form with music. Um, but I see all the doubt in my head about that and why it's a bad move. But Joel is like so good at it and he's a really good producer. And so when we were backstage at the Tempe Improv show, he pulled out his phone and started making these beats. And we were freestyling and coming up with some really cool stuff. And I, I, I'm going to keep chasing that just for fun, not like a big career thing. I want to be a rapper, but like just something fun to do. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, again, it would still be funny. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's all, it's all depending on how you, you know, you want to take it, I guess. But, you know, I, I think, uh, yeah, there is something there with stand up comedy and improv and also freestyle rap. Like there's that. That yeah. connection you get where you like tune into a, just like a, a frequency, I guess, of jokes or of, of just hitting things, you know, or, or if you're rapping, just saying the right words that rhyme, you know, on time, on beat. I've never been able to freestyle, which I yeah. find hilarious. Like I talk a lot and, and I, mean, I have a podcast. So I talk a lot and then I, I do get into rants, but I never it's never like a rap. <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, you should try just uh, freestyling without the worry of rhyming. Right, yeah, and just, just talking fast a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, talking to a beat. Yeah. Man, there is something like that. I mean, I know Maynard from Tool has done something similar to that in, in one of his songs where he, there's a beat going on. There's like the band's performing a, a you know a rhythm section and, and he's just talking fast over it. Kind of like a like an auction, you know? Those, yeah, like, yeah. Blah, 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 blah. I, that's something else that I don't understand how people do. Like that's the mumble rap. Yeah, the mumble I'm rap. Not that into. That. I thought it was cool at first, but I I think it's kind of oversaturated right now. Yeah. Or I mean, like, I I always thought I always thought of it as lazy. Like, come on, say words. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
you could do it. I know you could do it. <laughs> I thought that with trumpet too, like, um, cause when I was in high school, I was a lot better because that's all I wanted to do. I had a clear trajectory to being a music teacher and I had a, like a full ride scholarship to college and I was like really into playing trumpet oh, wow. and I did like the all state stuff. And whenever you do like all state, it's all of the trumpet players from the state, like the best of them. And they go into this room to audition in front of seven judges and before you go into audition everybody's warming up and what you always hear is like everyone's showing off to each other in the warm-ups and so you would always hear these like like really fast noodling and stuff and I always thought that wasn't it's technically impressive but I was always more of a fan of like you said like what do you have to say like what you know I guess Miles Davis is like a great example of someone who uses space. Um, who I know I'm like tangenting all over the place, but no, like no, no. Makes huge sense. inspiration to me because I've incorporated how he uses space into my own standup. Yeah, yeah. That's I mean that's that's the kind of that's the nerdy talk I was talking about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, it, music like. You're you're absolutely right. That that's the way he uses space definitely works uh, comedically. It's just timing and 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 the way words and and with the trumpet like the certain notes. Like I always preferred, like you said, Miles Davis over technicality. Like uh, if you if you start heading more towards like the metal realm of things, like Dream yeah. Theater is a prime example of of a band that I know that they are all very talented. I get it. I don't like. I don't connect with any of the music. I can't. It's just it's too much. It's wankery. Like Yeah. It's it's showing off. It's like check out my guitar solo. And it's like, oh yeah, check out my drum solo. And then like the <laughs> keyboard, like, check out mine. And it's like, oh God. It loses the soul. You know, like there needs to be some kind of message with the music that you can connect with. You know? Yeah. Something different, something unique. Like that I think that's the goal, um with any art form or even just being a person. Like you don't wanna be um a cookie cutter version of something else like you want to enhance your own voice and so it's not so much you should use space or you shouldn't but through doing that you learn how you want to say something Mm -hmm. and it's you know it's not or how you want to say it it's it's all just uh like so what the um song one of miles davis most famous songs and he solos on it and i was reading here's more nerdy stuff (laughs) that uh (laughs) That he he was really experimenting with how to make notes sound different on mm. trumpet. So like every note is just a new version of how to play it. Like some of it sounds bad. Like some of the notes sound really like on a, on a text textbook bad. But yeah, um, you know it's very experimental with that. And so I don't know. I with delivery and stand up and in trumpet. Like I always try to think of is there a different way i could play this or say this um which i think makes it more unique for sure yeah and that's that's where i get nerdy so i don't get nerdy with the technical like the book stuff i get i go into i get nerdy into the experimental aspect of like i got really into you know during the jazz classes i was you know they were teaching miles and Thelonious monk and you know all these different jazz artists and uh, I was definitely more into like the Chick Corea, like oh, oh yeah. that guy, that guy's doing acid. <laughs> <laughs> that, all those other dudes are doing coke. That guy's taking acid. Uh, that's the guy I like to listen to. Uh, always. I, I don't know. I, I I guess it's because I've used LSD in the past. You know, like it. it I guess that's the connection. You know. Uh, yeah. And you're like they're making it work really well. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a different vibe. Like you know. Uh, we're definitely inching closer to a time where it's more acceptable now. Like, look at Oregon with the passing of the, you can have mush like medical yeah. mushrooms and you can carry whatever you want drug wise in the city. Like, that's Mad Max to me. Like, that city. Like, you, you talk about LA getting all crazy, but Oregon, you can just walk around with cocaine now. It's not. It's. <laughs> Whoa! Yeah, that's weird. The mushrooms make more sense to me. Yeah, mushrooms fine, <laughs> you know. But like now, you can walk around with cocaine and heroin. Like it's no big deal in in Oregon. That's a little much. Uh, but the, the the psychedelics definitely. I mean, have you have you tried psychedelics? 
Oh, yeah. I, I tried a lot of psychedelics right out of high school. Um, mm. I didn't do many drugs in high school. I, I started smoking weed in high school. And then once I got out of high school, I, I wanted to, like, try everything. <laughs> uh, I remember taking a psychology class in my senior year. And it, it, there was a, a part about drugs. And I remember reading... Uh, we had to like read aloud and there was a part in the book about acid and it says like people reported that when they did acid they could see sounds and hear colors and I I couldn't I like I spoke out loud without I was like whoa that sounds awesome and the whole <laughs> class <laughs> the whole class started cracking up and I didn't mean to say it out loud and then um and because everyone just kind of laughed and nobody was like no, that's bad. Yeah, I no, thought, no okay. gasp. Yeah. No All I thought after that class was like, I can't wait to try acid. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's what I did. And, yeah. <laughs> and also, I I kind of have a joke about it, but I, I won't, I'm not going to do it. But I basically just talking about like, you study all these jazz musicians, and that's who you want to be. And all of them are doing drugs. All the ones that I respected and wanted to be like, so I'm thinking, okay, this is the path I should go down if I really want to play jazz. Like, I should experience that. And I don't know if that was good or bad, but... It's the devil's music. The devil's music made you do drugs. <laughs> well, you know, that's kind of a, like a lesson. I think you, you want to walk down the road least traveled. However, if you're trying to be somebody like some that's already traveled down a road you kind of follow their path until right. you realize you don't want to be exactly like that so I, I i don't do acid anymore i do mushrooms every once in a while but other than the occasional weed like and drinking i don't really do anything else because i just i think i've had it enough of it <laughs> had enough hey you tried it out that was that's you know you had your fill i mean i don't do uh acid or, or shrooms anymore either i you know i i wouldn't mind doing shrooms again sometime, but I feel like I'm now that like at that point in my life where I'm like, well, I need to plan this out. Like, if, yeah, we're gonna, yeah. if, we're gonna, if I'm going to do yeah. shrooms, I need to take a few days off of work. Okay. I need to make sure we have nothing to do, like get some groceries so we have food. Like, yeah, <laughs> you know, just prepare for it, and uh, and then I'll do it. But th those days of my youth, yeah, like where it was just a friend will show up. I got shrooms, like yes, and you know there was no pause for thinking about the like the, the the planning stages it was just mushrooms like what are we gonna do i don't know let's go to the forest like, <laughs> oh shit okay the nights feel so much longer <laughs> when you're younger yeah. like i remember one a night could feel like a whole week for compared to my nights now yeah yeah time is flying right now with this quarantine like, I, it's, yeah i keep i'll pull up my phone and and you know the facebook uh timeline thing will show up where like hey you check out your memories and i'm looking i'm like well, that was already a year ago like this year flew by i felt like that was you know maybe a month ago or two months ago and yeah it's been a whole year like i guess is you know i guess since we're not really going out and doing much i, I don't know what it is it really feels like it's flying and I think the sun going down so early here is like I coming from Arizona where we don't have daylight savings. It's mm. just such a trip to me. I and and I was talking about it last night. Before it's not like the sun is get going down lower than last year, but last year we were, you know, I'd work all day and then I'd go and the sun would be down when I got off work and then I'd go do mics all night. Sometimes yes. three mics in a night. Now I'm not working and I will, I'm hustling, but I'm not like working for the man. So, you know, I'm doing like my stuff during the day, but it's all at home pretty much. And then the sun's down and you settle in for the night because there's nowhere to go. So it, it, the days literally are like cut in half. Yeah, it's nuts. And, and, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm thankful that I have a job. I, you know, I'm glad that you are hustling and, and getting by, but you know, it's, it's rough when there's, you know, most of my friends are actually from the service industry, bartenders and yeah. stuff like that. So they're, they're all screwed and, you know, they're, they're not creatives, you know, they, they have to now figure out if they can be creatives, you know what I mean? Like, well, I'm stuck here. Should I start playing the piano or like, how can I create content? You know? Yeah. 
sounds like a transformer is outside of my window destroying the environment. Like that's what that sounds like it's going on right now. Right now I can't hear it. Good lord. Yeah, there's like a dumpster or something or a dump truck outside, I think. <laughs> the rabid dumpster that's coming to life. I it's what it sounds like. <laughs> it's just marching down the street. I, I you know, th- th- you know, not to change the subject and go on tangents, but that's I don't uh I wouldn't be surprised anymore. Like that's where we're at I know. now with, with the, what happened. <laughs> I keep checking and seeing news articles about aliens and like some dude talking about how there's an actual galactic federation. This was on NBC News. Yeah. They're talking about the Galactic Federation. I was just like, all right, well, I guess. <laughs> I'd get ready for it. I So I used to be a huge conspiracy theorist. I yeah. talked about it very briefly on Kill Tony like years ago when I was pulled out of the bucket. But I'm like, again, I don't take anything too seriously now, so I'm not super in it anymore because I don't know if you've ever met a conspiracy theorist who isn't very serious. Yeah. Um, they're all very serious, so I kind of broke away from that. But I kind of, for since like 2008, have been prepared for some sort of barter system. Mm-hmm. Where, and I, it's weird. I, it wasn't until you just said something that made me think about that. But it, it since you know, for years and years, I kind of because all the theory, all the conspiracy theories are about a global elite mm-hmm. that you know there there's. There are people or reptilian shapeshifters or whatever you want to believe in that want to rule the world and Illuminati, whatever. And so, world order. <laughs> yeah. And so at some point you're going to need something to barter with. And I think that's why I've kind of confidently walked into stand up because it's such a risky career path. But I thought, well, it's one thing I'm good at, and if I work at a corporate entity, it's I probably won't sustain there. Um, not just, like, losing my mind, like people say, but, like, literally, I don't think I'll have a job there forever, which is what we're seeing now. So many people have lost their jobs. Yeah. So I dove headfirst into creating a skill set, and, yeah, I'm glad I did because it's kind of all coming together now where you're seeing everybody pushed indoors jobs stripped away big business is the only thing open it i'm I'm probably gonna regret (laughs) this whole chunk of the podcast later but i wouldn't be surprised if we saw like a global elite in our timeline sure i mean you're kind of seeing it form now with what's going on you know not not talking politics or picking a side of anything you're just i'm just observing what's happening and it's yeah you know we have the somebody who was elected that now the old guy won't leave, and he's you know trying to build. Which a, old not, guy? <laughs> yeah, right. I know. Uh, he's trying to build, you know, of supporters to to kind of help him prove his point, and then you know the, I don't know. It just seems fishy. Yeah, like, all of it seems kind of like wow. Well, this happened in Cuba, so. I yeah, don't know. <laughs> it, it seems fishy, but also it it seems like um, exactly what prophecies i've told will happen for years oh, they're yeah. just you just when you start bringing up words like Illuminati and reptilian shapeshifters and gold and <laughs> it's, <laughs> again that. it's it's word association going right back to that you know you yeah. bring up anything like that and people immediately either dismiss it or get very serious about it yeah and you know i i am like kind of like you where i just kind of take it in stride i listen to it i actually i don't want those conspiracy theorists to go away because yeah. they're very entertaining. You know, I don't want to <laughs> silence them. Like Sam Tripoli is hilarious to me. Like he's the best. And then he, he recently yeah. interviewed uh, uh, the homie Steph from the Deftones. And that didn't go well for Steph. Oh, my God. <laughs> I, I love Steph, man. And But he, he talked about Flat Earth and uh, all this other stuff. And I was just like, man, I somebody should have known that Sam was going to bring that out of him. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> I can't imagine going on that podcast and what I would end up talking about. (sighs) But I think that I think when you get down to it, it's like a religion. You have to believe in something. And even if you're believing in nothing, that's you're choosing to believe in in nothing. So you have to have something to believe in um, just to function as a person. You need some kind of system. And so to me, conspiracy theory is a religion. It's. Uh, not like they're worshiping it but they're putting faith in that that's really what's going on even though there's no real answer to it 
it's all just again a theory but it's also like the bible reading you know yeah a, a religious person reads the bible every day or whatever and they, they read a passage or whatever conspiracy theorists watch the same youtube videos over and over yep. again you know what i mean it's the same thing yeah. like oh, science geez. is a religion like yeah i don't know i i, I believe more in science but <laughs> yeah yeah but again that is kind of religious in 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 the way that it is because it's just a matter of uh hey we did a bunch of tests and more times than not this happened you know so we're yeah. gonna we're gonna go this route so it's still kind of faith-based because there's still a risk factor you know what i mean and it uh, doesn't answer the big question yeah which well, is why are we even here <laughs> why are we even here <laughs> like what 40, is it 42 <laughs> 46 i forget yeah, the number 42 42 um yeah it's it's interesting that's the that's the what got me into the psychedelics um in the first place when i was younger hitchhiker's guide hitchhiker's guide no 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 <laughs> yeah i mean yeah i guess you know there's a lot of movies that i watched when i was younger that definitely connected in that sense and i and i you know uh i don't know i i had an, a bad car accident when i was younger and uh passed to passed away and came back oh for and, real yeah they did wow. the, I woke up to paddles in a helicopter. Whoa! <laughs> uh, and I saw some stuff uh, when I was I, I I saw some stuff when I was under, and and wow. uh, uh, I then spent like years doing psychedelics, and taking trips to Peru and uh, other countries to just kind of explore and try and figure out. Like I ended up in a in a. I ended up in Machu Picchu, Peru, which is the, the old ruins. Yeah. And, and I ended up uh, talking to the uh, one of my buddies introduced me to his one of his family members. It's like kind of a stocky uh, Peruvian man, you know, in his like 40s or 50s, in a suit and everything. Shook his hand. He had like jewelry. I'm like, okay, this guy's business. You know what I mean? And he sat me down and he was like, what do, what do you want to do with your life? I'm like, I don't know, man. I'm trying to figure out this thing that I saw. He's like, what did you see? And I explained it to him. Like, I saw this pattern. I saw this, like, you know, the shapes. He pulls out a book with the exact fucking shapes that I saw. Oh, my God. <laughs> I was like, what is, what is that? He's like, this is uh, the, the... I have it there. It's in Spanish. I'll, I can show it to you after we, we finish recording. But uh, it's like the master secret that the Illuminati and the... Uh, uh, what the, the Freemasons? Yeah. What, what they study, and and it's nuts. It's nuts that I saw. I I don't have an explanation for people. Like I can't tell you exactly what that was that I saw. Yeah. I have a belief of what it may be, and 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 you know I like the psychedelics helped me explore that path because you you could do a lot of like out of body experiences and you know you start thinking about what an actual dream is like you know is it just a memory is it just your imagination is it something else like you don't really know we don't have any science for that like we don't yeah. nobody's studying that fascinating yeah there, there's so many unanswered questions with dreams there's a lot of there are there are a lot of people studying it but i feel like it's more in the astrology realm or like in in crystal realm and in the sense that it's not really taken seriously like like um, like brain science or you know anatomy. Like it's it's not. It's all just like fairy tale fun to believe in. You know. My crystals and my incense. Which I, I think there's truth to that stuff too. Like, uh, but it is still like kind of mocked in mainstream society. Well, and the way I see it is is like you see the old Egyptian paintings, um, you know, wearing like masks of animals and stuff and. Yeah, uh, but that's not everybody focuses on that. Like, oh, that guy had a dog head, and that guy has like a you know a wolf, whatever, a jackal. Like, I'm looking at the fact they're all holding like tools. Yeah, like, that key of life that, that that one of them holds. Like, they're all holding something, and that is what crystals are. Like, it's that that tool that you're using to connect. It's my cell phone. Yeah. It's the tool that you're using to connect to that web of everything That's else. That's hilarious. Someone should do a Photoshop of the hieroglyphics and take all the, the tools and put the <laughs> tools on their hands. It's what it is. It's the onk. This is Soft the onk. Just has an iPad. Hit me up. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start making a, a new brand of phone, the onk. 
the onk. <laughs> yeah, Samsung, Apple, I'm open for business. Let's go. You can have a hieroglyphic keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, uh, it's it's nuts to me like, that, that people don't explore that. You know, I meet a lot of people, and, and not to judge anybody, I'm not judging anybody. It's just kind yeah. of fun to me that, that they won't. Just look into it some more, you know, and that's that's kind of a big problem in all of society. Like that's what's going on with the elections and all of this shit and the voter fraud and it, and the people that don't believe the virus is real, the people that think vaccines are a bad idea. Like all, just what, just look into it. Yeah, <laughs> just, just think of it's few it's minutes. Tough, like you can. I don't know. I used to really dive into all the stuff we're talking about. It's cool that's getting, that you're bringing it up because I just eventually I just kind of got tired. You know, mm-hmm. I was like, I just gotta put one foot in front of the other and just try to figure out what I want to make of my life. Even you know, but yeah, it's it's really easy to get distracted and be comfortable than to really ask questions about what things mean. And I, I get it. Like people should do more, but I. Sometimes I just get exhausted by all of it because there's no answers. <laughs> yeah, there's no real answers. There's no <laughs> solid answers. And also, that's how there's a very thin line from enjoying uh, looking that stuff up and and becoming uh, the 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 methed out homeless guy on Ho- yeah. Hollywood Boulevard. <laughs> like, I'm telling you, the, the lizard people. Like that that this very thin line to becoming that. You know? It's true. It's such a thin line. Yeah. It, I don't know. I I forget what I was gonna say. <laughs> well, cons- we're talking about conspiracy theories, but it's it's just you know, I I enjoy them. I don't want them to go away. Uh, it, it keeps me questioning things. That's and that's fun. Yeah, okay. they're all like they're they all are fun. It's when you really shape your life around it that it when it can get scary. Like especially around this whole virus and stuff. Like. Because it is something that we've never seen before in our lifetime, this kind of global impact. And I don't know. I know some people that are really conspiratorial against it. And it just, like, it sucks because everybody has a right to believe in what they want. And then on each side, people get so mad at each other just well, for, like, believing something. I'm starting to get like you with that. Where with now, with, with my, I guess I have a bunch of friends that, like you said, that don't believe in that stuff. And... I'm tired of hearing it, so now I'm just kind of now I just sound like yeah okay I just yep yeah, mm-hmm nope yep it's a it's a hoax, and I'll just go about do my business you know what I mean yeah we're gonna we're gonna get a vaccine we're gonna get vaccinated and we'll be fine, and then eventually they'll just either stop talking about it because they're embarrassed because they realize they were wrong, and they'll just go away and fade away and like go write a book or something, uh, uh or you know maybe they'll do something stupid and hurt themselves, which is unfortunate, but at the end of the day, it's, that's their problem now. I can't, yeah. I can't, I can't give you any more time if that's the way you fucking, you know it's what I mean? Tough. <laughs> you gotta, I don't know, I try to just, like, enjoy everybody's theories, because I, you can't, like, uh, if, I guess what I'm trying to say is everybody thinks they're right. Yeah. You know, yeah. like, and so, it's it's hard to tell someone that they're wrong because they think you're wrong. And so it's like everybody has the right to believe whatever they want. Like that's literally their human right mm-hmm. being born. So I try to stay open minded to that. It's it's only when people like really try to shove it down your throat that I'm like, Okay, I don't wanna bye. <laughs> but but when as as long as people are just like sharing what they believe in, it's it's again I relate it to religion. Like, if somebody is trying to convert you into Christianity or Catholicism, you're like, whoa, I respect what you believe in, but I'm doing my own thing. Same with conspir- conspiracies. Like, if I know somebody believes in something, that's whatever. you got to respect it. But if they start getting you to jump on their side, it's like... Yeah. They're trying to recruit you. That's when it becomes a problem. Yes. Other than that, I honestly... And maybe I'll look wrong in the future, but I, it's, I don't know. I don't try to stop anybody from thinking a certain way because it's just, I don't know. We all, it's, it's a coping mechanism when you really think about it. It's, it's just a way people get by from their Mm -hmm. life. They, it takes a long time to shatter a belief system 
and yeah. you can't really do it to someone else. You have to do it within. Have you ever had like a belief system shattered? Um, I mean, I grew up uh, Catholic, like super, super, like strict private school type situation in wow. New Jersey. And like getting beat up by nuns and their rulers and all, that whole thing and church choir and first period is religion where we get yeah. to open our books and read about Jesus that day and I was like and, you know uh, I always had like I believe I get I believed it in a very suspicious way like I'm like I guess and my parents are telling me this is it right, right. and and my school teaching me that this is what it is right so i guess it's what it is and then i i don't know what happened but i i it happened i i think it was because of dinosaurs i was in seventh grade oh. I, I i brought up dinosaurs because i'm like i saw someone had like dinosaurs i'm like what the well, so what's up like, what's that what's that kicked your ass. <laughs> she started beating the shit on me and i started laughing oh my god I started laughing like on the floor i was on i just remember being on the floor cracking up crying laughing and she's just whacking at me with the with the ruler and then uh, the, they called my mother and told her that i was possessed and i needed an exorcism whoa and uh my mom went over there and spit on the nun <laughs> oh my god like, how dare you hit my son <laughs> dude that's bad ass yeah, I've never ridiculous. heard of anyone spinning on a nun before. <laughs> How fucking dare you touch my son? And then she just pulled me out of there and like I you know I told her I'm like, I don't want to go back there. Are you kidding me? Yeah. What's going on? Why am I getting beat up? What is this? <laughs> she probably was not thinking about that when she sent you to Catholic school. Like yeah. that's supposed to be a, a place of love and peace, I would think. Yeah, it's it's weird when you think about uh you know how people that are into that religion ignore those aspects of it because there's a lot of that and it goes way back in you know, the inquisition and how they would yeah. burn women and all that like there's some and, fucked up shit guys and on, the, <laughs> on the flip side too like especially comics like you know a lot of comics mock religion and stuff but catholics and good only in the religion it i almost feel bad for catholics who are good people because their religion does have so much negativity around it especially in these days like, with priests and all that coming out but um but there are good practicing religions. william william montgomery Is he? <laughs> no not he and I, he and I, no he and i went, got forever. into it one night when i told him that i didn't believe in jesus and he was like what I'm like, <laughs> like i believed he was a guy sure he probably Probably did some cool stuff, like, you know, when you jam with a band and you telep telepathically communicate with them. Like, probably did some cool stuff like that. Oh, yeah. I bet Jesus <laughs> <surprised>. rocked. <laughs> what do you think Jesus played? Oh, he's definitely a mandolin player of some sort. I was or thinking lead singer. Lead singer? <laughs> with a mandolin or some yeah, kind of small mandolin. guitar, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. There's probably someone on Hollywood Boulevard right now doing this act. <laughs> well, I saw a Darth Vader banjo player in Key West, Florida. That was fun. It was just full-on Darth Vader mask, cape, and then a banjo. And I, I loved it. That, that's a good... Thank you. Those are the type of crossovers we need more of, you know? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that's a Hollywood thing. Oh, my God. That's what Hollywood is. Hollywood Boulevard is just it's Superman... <laughs> Just Superman walking around and, and playing the, 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 what do you call it, the buckets, the turned around buckets with sticks. Yeah, just buckets with sticks, that's all it is. <laughs> uh, anyway, so you got your show, Hit Send is coming. Uh, the, I saw that it was kind of postponed, is that because of the, the, the venue, like is that because of the comedy store shutdown? We're figuring things out. We're moving. We were starting on YouTube, and now we're moving to Twitch. And so we found out like hours before that um, they couldn't stream on the YouTube. So they're moving us to Twitch, which we're all excited about. So we wanted to take instead of like rushing into it, we want to take the week to properly promote it, and that way all of the people on YouTube <laughs> last week aren't like, where is it? So we're doing that, and then. Um, we might take another week off in December just because of holidays. And then after that, we're just going to hit the ground running. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Warning with Twitch. 
Don't use music. Oh, we well we're gonna we're gonna play like our own music and um and then anything like so we do sponsored segments. Um <laughs> And and we're making the commercials, so <laughs> they're all fake sponsors <laughs> okay. for now. Um, but I use all royalty free. Okay, yeah, because I was I'm gonna just... say they 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 recently I saw that they took down a bunch of people just because really? they were like even guitar players. The guitar player from Dragon Force was perform like doing a playthrough of one of their songs with the song his playing own song? his own song, the song playing in the background. And he's like, all right, guys, this is how you play it, and he's playing it, and they took it down because. <laughs> you had to go to court and all this bullshit just to get like permission to re-upload the video. Like, come on, like that's mine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so we'll see. I never really, I never done my own thing on Twitch. I've done other people's shows on Twitch. It seems to work pretty well. Um, yeah. but we'll figure it out. I, the people watching now are awesome. Like, really loyal. Um, somebody commented. You know, just let me know where it is. I'll be there. So I I feel pretty confident with that. And then uh, circling back to the beginning with the comedy store, like using their platform, they're bringing us a lot of people too. And so with their helps posting about where it's going to be, I think I think we'll be fine. Yeah, yeah. And you guys have the backup of the Kill Tony camp too, like the Discord and all those fans that that do you know oh, hang yeah. out together. Um, and 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 you guys are taking advantage of what I think is now the future of, of content, which is creating stuff, but also interacting with the audience. Like the live Twitch chat thing is very important. People love that. You know, yeah, Mitch was love- like really yeah. gaslighting that and I, or, or putting the gas on that. And I was happy because it, it was really, really fun. The first episode. Yeah. That's what gets people engaged. The fact that, you know, they hear their name or like the, the fact that they can type something and you respond to it like that. Yeah. Like, uh, also, that stereo app that just came out not too long ago. Yeah, where you good. were on our episode, and that was so fun. Yeah, I love that thing. I want to start doing those. I was thinking of doing like a separate, you know, uh, uh, just a little tiny show version of what I do. Yeah. Like, on stereo, because I just I like the interactive aspect of it, where people can chime in. I just so far so good. I've I've very rarely seen a problem, but it, it seems ripe for problems. You know what I mean? Like inappropriate thing being said. Oh or, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, just dumb people saying something harassment style. You know, like I don't want that. I, I wonder if there's a way to pre-screen any of that. I don't know. Yeah, that is a good. I don't know. There's got to be a way. And in, in fact, if it gets so bad, you could have me just call in. And leave really inappropriate messages, and so the app will then make a sensor for it. Oh yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know? We'll just get ahead of it. <laughs> um, so, are you doing more of that stuff with Stereo App or no? No, I d- so I didn't. I might now that I did get my new phone because before my phone was like overheating and like uh, it, I think I had to recall Mitch three or four times. Oh shit! Okay. And obviously, it's not the internet because I'm on the same internet now, and we're talking fine. So. Yeah. It it was my phone. It 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 would literally overheat to the point where all my apps would just start opening and it would start writing text to people, which was just gibberish. You know, like it was like it looked like it was possessed. So I was I was like, say, it sounds like your phone's possessed. Yeah, and I lived with that for like a year, and then I was like, I think I better get a new phone. <laughs> so. Yeah, it happens sometimes. You you know, like my phone, the GPS stopped working. So like I I got there was a few times where I'd go out for some chores and then I'd get lost. Yeah, because I was. <laughs> I usually that's how I drive these days. I'm, I have so much going on in my head. I'm I'm either listening to a podcast or I'm I'm listening to some new band that sent me something, and I'm just listening and, and I'll look up to the GPS and it's telling me where to go. And it would be frozen, so I keep looking up. I'm like, I guess I just keep going straight. Oh my god! <laughs> and like you know, ten minutes later, I'm like, what is happening? <laughs> You're like in Arizona. Yeah, right, yeah. So it, it, that I, I was like, all right, I guess I need to upgrade my phone. Yeah. GPS is done working. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, um, hit send. Guys, where can they uh, subscribe to watch this on Twitch? What's the Twitch uh, handle? Um, it's going to be hit send, but um, yeah, that we're still working out. Because right now, I think forever you'll still be able to watch it on the Comedy Store YouTube page. Yeah. Um, but we'll just have to post that after we record live. But if you follow uh, at Hit Send Podcast on Instagram or Twitter, 
um, you'll see updates and it's going to be every Monday. We do Monday at 630. That way, if you are coming from Kiltony, it rolls right into Kiltony. So um, you won't miss that. And it's like a double feature. But yeah, at Hits and Podcast on Twitter and Instagram there first. And then you'll see all the updates and where to go. Very cool. Very cool. And you're still doing uh, you're still selling the, the, the ornaments online. I am selling them, and I'll plug them because I only have a few left. Mostly okay. plastic. I have, like, three glass ones left. So, um, yeah, if you want to get them, now's the time. So. It's the time of the year, guys. Ornament time. I have, yeah. I collect a, a new ornament every year. We buy one with the year on it. The, my, my wife and I, we, we put a little picture frame one. So, it's that time of the year. Get get a jet ski ornament. Put a little picture in it if you can. I don't know how you, how you do them. I know I saw you have, like... Uh, stuff inside but how do you yeah get in I do. so <laughs> it's you first you can get them on my website jetskijohnson.com there's a merch tab and then they're all handmade i put um like blue tinsel in it like i try to make it look like waves and i put a, a little foam cut out of pink glasses and a silver trumpet that are like floating in the water and then nice. it says jet ski on the front very cool that's yeah. awesome yeah um and then yeah everything else just follow you on social media if they want to follow your adventures yeah, please do. I'll be posting more sketches up there and all my contents on mainly my Instagram. So. Yeah, and definitely look look through some episodes of Kill Tony. If you haven't by now, I swear to God, everybody that's listening, like <clears throat> I've I've had everyone from the show on this show. I think at this point, I think so. Except maybe Red Band, but everybody else has kind of been. <laughs> on. And you know, there's a reason for that. There's a reason I like. If you enjoy this show that I do here and the, the guests that I have, there's a reason I pick. The guests is because I enjoy talking to them. I enjoy what they do. So thank you, uh, Jesse, for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. This has been so fun. Thanks for having me. I had a lot of fun, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll be in touch. That 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 DJ Lethal song needs to. Uh, yeah, when are we gonna hear it? Lot. He's he's in he's in quarantine. He's he's pretty uh he's locked down from the virus. So hopefully, when things loosen up, we'll be able to go hang out and and finish it up and and get it done. We'll get All it right. out. Um, don't go anywhere. I'm going to show you that book real quick, but thank you guys. Bye. Cheers.